So, as a continuation of the positron from yesterday, I'm going to talk now about positronic variable, which is basically a software proof that there is a the equivalence of the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics and multiverse theory. <laughs> so, it's full credit again from Damien. So, like you saw yesterday, this is the uh, Feynman diagram of the annihilation of a, a positron, an electron here and a positron, it emits a gamma ray, and you can recreate an electron and a positron out of this gamma. What's funny about this Feynman diagram is that it's actually completely equivalent to an electron interacting with a photon that is actually uh, very strong and push back the electron back in time. You can completely, in the equation and in the physics equation, reverse and what you have is basically the positron behave exactly in all the physics equation like an electron that goes back in time. So, what is a positronic brain? It's actually, mm -hmm, if you make your variable out of positron instead of making them out of electrons, <coughs> you can really have variable that goes back in time. So, how can you make a variable that goes back in time? Let's say in a normal software, you have uh, 37 degrees that you want to convert to Fahrenheit, you multiply by 9, divide by 5, add 32, and you got the temperature in final. So normal calculation, 37, 33, 66, 98, 98.6 final. If now my temp variable is a positronic variable, it starts from the bottom, it's undefined. You start the calculation, 32, 6.4, 57.6, .6, and finally everything you did is for nothing because you put back 37. <laughs> so not very useful, but so the definition of a positronic variable Every variable starts from the beginning of the clock and end with the end. A positronic variable is exactly the opposite. So, mm -hmm. <laughs> yet, I actually implemented it. In <laughs> <laughs> so, how does it work? This is for the positronic brain. How do you make variable work in phantom? So, I can do after. So, what I did here is, for example, a set of animals, bull, cow, mouse, camel, dog, and cat. I create a positronic variable, which is the position, and I want to find my dog inside this list of variables. I print here looking for animal into animal, and I print here, I found the animal at the position position. And actually, I do the calculation after I actually print the result. So I'm printing the result before I do the calculation. And I'm not cheating, so I'm going to show you. So this is the actual result. Code, you can see the dog, the search here. Uh, I have the position minus one position, and I think, and I'm in the I'm in the positronic universe, and so I'm going to do the positronic search. I'm going to run it, and you can see looking for dog, found dog at position four. It print immediately, and he found the actual position of the dog before he did the calculation. <laughs> <laughs> before you hit the run <laughs> So, why it's very interesting is actually I could have put here, uh, so I didn't know how in Phantom how to do real life, but I can read actually the animal that I want to find here before. So I can print the results of the animal that you are going to ask for. <laughs> it's very, very interesting. Especially if you use it for Google Price or things like that. <laughs> there is one uh, cave hit here is that if, for example, here I did a small just loop. By the way, here on the side, what you can see is the Feynman diagram of uh, positronic software. So it's the exact Feynman diagram of the positronic software. And here I have just an antivalor that is initialized here with minus one, which doesn't mean anything because it's afterwards. And it just loops between one and minus one. But as a good hacker, what you do, you just remove the minus here. What happened? It just made a mess because you get an unstable universe. <laughs> <laughs> so you have an unstable universe, you have to keep uh, handling between 1 and minus 1. And what you have is actually, if you look at the Feynman diagram like that, so you, you see the two arrows, but you can see that what happened is that every variable has actually a quantum state superposition of 1 and minus 1, which is the Copenhagen interpretation of quantum mechanics. Every particle is in uh, multiple states and has a superposition of the quantum state. My variable here, val, is actually 1 and minus 1 at the same time. The only thing that I need to do is that I need to multiply the number of universes.